Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to make the Scarlet Witch Energy Composite in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Let's begin. Alright, just a few things to keep in mind when you're filming your footage. Ideally, you're going to want to shine a light onto your hand while you're doing this effect so that it kind of interacts with the real world, the visual effect. Um, I didn't do this because I didn't have a light available that I could shine on me, but if you have access to a light, you totally should. Um, if you don't have a light, we can make up for that in post later. Another thing to keep in mind when filming energy effects is that energy effects tend to look better on a dark background. Um, my footage is quite bright, so that could be a problem. This feels hypocritical. All right, with my footage loaded up in Resolve, I'm just going to get to the point where I start doing my wavy stuff with my fingers hit control B and that will just split the clip right there. I'm going to right click on that, make it a new fusion clip. Make sure the playhead is over that. DaVinci is going to be nice and not lag on me. Go to fusion. All right, we're in the fusion tab, which is DaVinci's built-in compositor. They've actually composited a lot of actual movies, actual movies as opposed to the fake movies. They've actually used fusion for compositing in Captain America the Winter Soldier and Avengers Age of Ultron, which were Scarlet Witch's first two um, introductions to the MCU. So, fun little tidbit right there. So I'm going to take the Scarlet Witch effect that I rendered. I teach you how to make that in a previous tutorial. You should definitely check that out if you want to learn how to make it. Alright, so I'm going to click on that, hit 2. Alright, so we have the effect right there. This one is loopable, so if it didn't go as long as the footage. I could just hit loop and it would just keep going on. It is longer than my footage, so that shouldn't be a problem. All right, I'm going to hit F2 on my keyboard and rename that Magic. And then by process of elimination, this one is my wiggly, with a Y, fingers. Always good to stay organized. All right, so if I Let's see, bring this down. If I go into two viewers here, can put my magic here and my wiggly fingers over here. So in order to get the magic to stick to my hand, make it look like it's going along with it, I'm going to motion track my hand. I'm going to hit shift space and search, if I can spell it right, tracker. All right, so that'll drop a point tracker in on your timeline. I'm going to put that in the second viewer. Go hit this little green square right here. I'll just give me a better view. Let's see something I can track. Usually want to look for something with high contrast. This point on my bracelet looks pretty good. So I'm just going to hit this button right here that will track forward from where we are in the timeline. All right, that finished. It only took 24 seconds. And that looks very nice, like it's sticking to my bracelet perfectly. So now we're going to go to our first frame and then just track backwards. All right, that finished. And now we have this point attached to my bracelet. That's sticking quite nicely. So what you could do is take the output of the magic and drag it into the tracker and have the operation set to match move that will stick the thing, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do that a different way that will give us a little bit more control. So I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to click on my tracker, hold down shift, and just bring that out of there. I'm also going to hit F2 and rename that hand underscore track. If you're working with multiple trackers, it's really good to um, label your trackers. There's only going to be one tracker in this one, but it's a good habit to get into. All right. So I'm going to take the output, which is this little square of the magic, drag it onto the square of wiggly fingers, and that'll automatically make a merge node for you. I'm going to hit 2, and it looks exactly the same. So I'm going to take the apply mode here, turn it to screen. Well, now you can barely see it, but we'll work on that. First, we're going to make it stick to my hand. So I'm going to hit shift space, XF, and then I'm going to right-click on the center, connect to, 
tracker one, tracker one path position. Now it is beautifully tracked to my bracelet. Problem is we want it to be tracked to my hand. So what I'm gonna do is do X, shift space, XF, do another transform, and then we can just take that one, bring it over here, maybe make it a tiny little bit bigger, and it is tracked to our hand. If you can't get a decent track on your hand, you may have to manually keyframe a transform. You don't have to be too exact with this because it is magic, so there's a little room for error. It can just be wiggling around a little bit, but best case scenario, you can get a good track on it. All right, so at this point, we have it. I'm just going to put this on one screen. We have it tracked to the hand, but we can barely see it. It's coming out very weak, and this is, again, a good reason why you'd want to shoot off a dark background. Right here, the darker parts of the image, it's coming out better, but on my hand, it's just like completely blown out. So one thing we can do to help bring out the colors, it's coming, looking kind of pink right here, is do shift space, CC, that will add a color corrector node. So I just take the saturation of this, and drag it up, and that helps bring out some more of the colors. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Also, what you're probably going to want to do is right-click here, take off high quality, motion blur. That'll help play back a lot. All right, so now it the colors are a little bit better, but it looks crazy sharp compared to the rest of our image. And that's going to be a big thing of compositing if you're doing CG elements, and this was technically computer generated, so it is CG. You're going to want to blur it because nothing your camera picks up is going to be that sharp. Like, nothing. So I'm going to hit shift space and add a blur node. And just do it a little tiny bit. Alright, that looks good. It's matching the rest of our hand in blurriness. That's good. So it kind of looks like it's just slapped on at this point, which it is, but the whole point of compositing is to make it look like it's not that way. Alright, so... Since there is no light being cast onto this, onto my fingers by this, we need to fix that. So I'm going to go into two screens here. So what I want to do is take just the highlights of this hand where the light would be hitting and make them red to show the light being cast. So what I'm going to do to get the highlights is make sure I'm not selected on anything. Hit shift space and add a luma here and drag the output of that of the wiggly fingers into Lumacare. I'm gonna bring that into number two. So that did a pretty good job of isolating just the highlights. I'm just gonna, you can play around with the low and high to just get the parts that you want. All right, so I've got just the highlights there. I'm going to blur that. And one problem we have is that we're getting the walls in here and we don't wanna turn the walls red. So what I'm going to do is bring down an ellipse tool Position that over here, real roughly. And then I'm going to very, very, very roughly at make a garbage mat for this. So I'm just going to put a keyframe on the X, go like 20 frames back, move that, check in between, make sure it doesn't jump off, which it kind of does. It doesn't have to be super accurate. The big goal is to just make sure that most of your hand is inside the circle here. All right, I'm done with that, and it just roughly follows my hand. One thing I'm going to want to do is soft edge that. Just in general, you want to soft edge your masks almost always, because like we said earlier, there are not gonna be any perfectly straight, smooth lines like that. All right, so I'm going to take the output of this, right click and drag, bring it over the luma here, and go down to garbage mat. And we have done the opposite of what we wanted. What have I done? Just invert it. Boom. So now we just have the highlights of our hand. So what we're gonna do with that is take a background node, bring that to the viewer, and I'm gonna bring it down here to a kind of pinkish, scarletish. Take the output of this luma here into the blue triangle of this background. So now we have the background is being cut out by the alpha, which is the transparency of that luma key layer. 
So I'm going to take that background, merge it over the wiggly fingers. So now if we look at that, I look like I have a terrible sunburn. That is not what we're going for. Take the apply mode, bring it over to overlay. So now that adds a little bit of that red cast on your hand. You can see before and after. Just adds a little bit of that. And you can play around with the color of it if you want. I find that the default red gives too much of an orange look. So bring it down to this kind of uh, pinkish look. That looks good. And then when we look at the magic on top of it, it looks a little bit more like it's reacting. All right, so one thing that's really fun to do with um, magic energy effects to give it kind of a punch is to add a displacement. So I'm going to shift space after that merge and add a displacement. All right, displace. All right, so I'm going to bring that into viewer one. Gonna take the output of this blur bring it into the displace. Gonna take the type to X and Y and then just put it a little tiny bit on the X and a little tiny bit on the Y. It's a subtle effect but it adds a lot of kind of heat to show the power of this effect. If you look right here it's reacting to where the effect would be warping the image like a heat thing. All right, so another way to make this look more powerful is to add a glow to it. So I'm going to shift space, add a soft glow. Be holding that and then hold shift while I'm dragging it over the line and when it turns like that. All right, so we have a soft glow. I'm gonna bring this here. That is a little bit much. So I'm going to actually take the glow size almost down to zero. Hey, bring down the gain a little bit. Go from this to this, brighten up certain parts. Then I'll shift space, add another soft glow. And this one, I'm going to take the gain down, threshold up, and then bring up the size. And maybe the gain a little bit, down a little bit more. So now we go from this to where it's just there here where it's actually showing the light that's being emitted by this thing. We can try play that. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm actually going to take my Luma keyed thing, blur it a little bit more. Yeah, that looks good. So if we were to go back to the edit page, we would see that the magic would just like exist. Like it would just be nothing, then boop, it exists. So from the first frame, our magic is there. We want to have it kind of animating on. So what you could do is go into the merge of all these and then play with the blend, animate those. But that doesn't look really realistic. So what we're going to do is take our wiggly fingers, do Control C, or if you're on a Mac, Command V. Go over here, Control V. So now we have a duplicate of our wiggly fingers. So I'm going to merge that on top. Bring that to the viewer. And that's just our original footage, so it's going to cover it up. And then we're going to reveal the footage under it with a mat, or what we're going to use as a mat. So go up here, add a background, and that background is going to be white. It really doesn't matter what color, but white makes it easy to see. So then I'm going to add an ellipse on that. So soft edge that a little bit, rule of thumb. So what we're going to do is animate this ellipse coming on. So you could do that by animating the width and the height individually, or what you can do is take the width, hit equals in here, and that'll bring up the expressions thing. I don't know what it's called. So I'm going to take this plus symbol, so it'll bring this little line up here, and drag that over to height. So now the value of the width over here will be equal to the value of the height. So now we just have one slider to control instead of two. Save you time. So I'm going to put a keyframe on the first frame. Then about 35 frames later, I'm going to add another keyframe. I'm going to take the height till it completely fills the frame of this one. And back here, I'm going to drag it all the way down. So now we have 
this circle, animating up till it fills the whole frame. Alright, but this, again, it's kind of boring. Doesn't look real. So what we're going to do is mess up those edges. So what I'm going to do is shift space, add another displace. This one we can keep set on radial. And what is going to drive this displace will be our handy dandy fast noise. Bring that into the viewer. So bring up the detail, up the contrast all the way, bring up the scale, good amount, switch it to discontinuous and inverted. Maybe bring up the brightness a little bit. So now we have these little line streak things. So bring the displace back. So I'm going to take the output of the fast noise into my displace. That roughens up these edges nicely. Let's see, I'm going to up the refraction strength a little bit more. That's good. And you want to go into the fast noise and bump up the seed rate. So it's always changing every frame. So now if we watch that, we have this evolving pattern going up. And that is what's going to reveal our thing. Going to shift space, add a blur just to not have these harsh lines. So bring that in. Blur size up. Good amount. That looks good. Maybe a little bit more. Well, not that much. All right. So then I will take the output of this blur into the red. Um, that's blue. The blue arrow of the wiggly finger. So now if I do that. So now that's cutting out the copy on top. So we'll start with our effect on. And then this thing will take it away. And maybe if you're doing a the opposite, where your magic is going away, that might work. What I'm going to do is apply mask inverted. So now what happens is this right here, if we bring that just in, there's a hole that is the shape of our thing that we're using as a mat. There's probably a name for that. And it's cutting out, showing what's at the bottom. So it just kind of flares up in a magical burst. I love it. One thing you can do that is an optional step that might help to tie it in is add a lens flare to your thing. Um, there aren't any lens flare tools native to Fusion, but if you go on Reactor, there are some really good lens flare tools. I believe they're by Milo Labs. I'm sorry if I miss said your name. So shift space, LF, the LF tools, ML LF tools. Those are really good. I enjoy them. Um, I'm not going to do that for this tutorial. So now it's connected to the media out. Go to the edit tab. What I like to do is right click on this, go to render cache fusion output, and hit on. So that'll just make sure that it starts rendering. And once that little red line has turned blue, you will be ready to view your effect. All right, that finished rendering. I have no idea how long it took. I didn't keep track. It looks pretty good if I do say so myself. All right, that will be it for this tutorial. Um, if you enjoyed it, if you wouldn't mind liking or subscribing, if you did not enjoy it, then you may dislike. It won't hurt my feelings. If there is an effect that you would like me to do a tutorial on, please leave a comment below. I will do my best to do it. And yeah, that's all. All right, I'm out.